Greetings everyone. We are back with the Moon Challenge. Yesterday was the first chance when everyone across the world could get the first glimpse of the Moon in its present cycle. We were all doing it separately but together in this goal. Day 2 brought us a beautiful thin crescent moon in the evening sky towards the west yesterday. It was a difficult task in the beginning. But as the evening grew uh, darker in the twilight, we could see the thin sliver of the moon hanging on the western horizon. It was beautiful. We knew that uh, the moon was about 2% illuminated, which means we could take the whole portion of the moon that we see from the, the whole circle that we see on the full moon, let's say, only 2% of that was illuminated. And still, it gave us this beautiful sight. One of my friends has captured this site and you can see it was breathtaking. The colors of the dusk make it even more beautiful. I'm sure this is going to continue throughout this week and we'll see better and better pictures of the moon during its crescent phase. This is a close-up of the same taken by another amateur astronomer friend and you can see that we have a very thin crescent. Of course, you can also in this picture see that there is the part of the moon uh, which is not illuminated by the sun but by the earth. Now, this is called earth shine and this does confirm that the whole of the moon is present in the sky. It's only that we don't see much of it which is not illuminated by the light of the sun. So this part that you see here, the thin crescent, is where the sun's light is reflecting off. And this is the part which is not getting the direct sunlight, but instead it is getting the light reflected from our planet, which is a big reflector in the sky as well. It is getting reflected from there onto the moon and then back to our eyes. Lovely. And that is called Earth shine. So this is just the beginning. This picture was not so easy to take, but I'm sure in the future pictures you'll be able to see Earth shine even better. It makes for really beautiful pictures. Of course, this uh, particular phase of the moon on the first day is the start of a challenge and it did prove to be challenging to us. For some time we thought maybe we won't see the moon today. This happens often for what is called the Eid moon. Here in India, we have Eid and many other celebrations which require us to sight the first day's moon and then begin the celebrations. Well, uh, Eid ka chand is a phrase used for things which are rare or difficult to find. So you can see it's actually a part of our tradition. The moon challenge is also coinciding with the sacred month of Ramzan and at the end of this challenge, I think people will again start looking uh, at the moon by first trying to sight this elusive crescent on day two of the next phase. I suggest using binoculars on these days and in fact throughout the challenge because they offer a very good sight of the moon and uh, I think most households if they have at some time indulged in uh, travel etc they would possess some binoculars. If not, don't be disappointed. The moon is always there with its beauty and you can always sight it with your naked eyes. If you want to really capture these beautiful sights, we also would like to give you some tips on photographing the moon. While we are doing this series of observations throughout the month, why not record it and click your own moon pictures? If you have a camera but don't know how to do it, here are some pointers from us. Do look out for this infographic on our social media. Please remember, the moon is big, bright, and it's a moving object in the sky. We tend to forget this when we are looking at the moon with our eyes, which makes it seem very small and still in the sky. But for your camera, which may, in these dark conditions when you are uh, photographing the moon, it may actually have to open uh, its shutter for a longish time so that it could capture the moon's light enough. So for that you need to have your camera quite stable. 
make sure it is on a tripod or a, on a stable surface. It would also help if it could be maneuverable and pointed properly at the moon so that uh, you could take a series of pictures, maybe in the same frame, etc., over the month. Of course, there are some problems and solutions that uh, we are suggesting. So, if you see, uh, if you take a picture of the moon and if you see that it seems too bright or too faint or too blurred, there are certain uh, actions to be taken. Please set the aperture of your camera, which is basically the small uh, opening in front of your camera which allows the light inside. So, you have to adjust this according to the image that you are getting. If you think it is going to be too bright, then the aperture should be kept minimum. So, for this, what is called the F value should be really high. If you are going to see the moon really faint like yesterday, you could actually keep the aperture wide open and so for that, the F value will be really low. You can adjust this and I'm sure you'll figure it out as the time goes and you get more experience. Of course, uh, things need to be focused, so with a smaller aperture, you will get a better focus. You may need to later do focusing adjustments to get really sharp details of the moon's surface. This will become more uh, useful when we get more of the surface area of the moon visible and if you are photographing with a good lens, maybe focusing it properly at infinity or close by to that would be very useful. So keep that in mind. The moon is also small in the sky. It's only about a half a degree uh, in diameter. So for any normal lens or a mobile camera, it will hardly give any image. What you need is magnification. So make sure that you have a zoom lens or some other tool which can help you magnify the image. This could be a simple uh, attachments that you get for mobile cameras or it could be as high-end as having a big telescope attached to your DSLR camera. That's your choice but magnification is a must if you want to take detailed pictures of the moon. I'm sure you'll find your own favorite way to do this. For good photography uh, of the moon or any astrophotography you have to be patient, be perseverant, take multiple trial and error shots you may not just get the perfect shot in the first go. So try out various ISO aperture and shutter speed settings and make sure that you get the best one and click many pictures of that setting so that you know you can uh, take away the chances that there might be a handshake or a wind uh, might have affected your camera etc. So be careful about all these things and always take multiple exposures so that from them you could choose the best image. Choose your frames well. This is a must to get a good composition and to make your picture interesting. If you are using a wide angle lens in which you are taking more of the sights than just the moon, you might have a beautiful silhouette or something or you might have a tree, something like that, then make sure that you compose it well and there are several rules of photography composition that you could follow in that. If you are using a zoom lens in which you are just focusing on the moon, make sure that the crops are proper and your picture is sharp and crisp, fully focused. So this will enhance the features of the moon and the craters etc. Make sure you keep this in mind just to increase the quality of your pictures. If all these tips have been useful to you, make sure you post your pictures on social media, etc. Share them with everyone and don't forget to tag us and hashtag moon challenge on your pictures. I'm quite excited to look at the moon tonight. It's going to be a beautiful crescent again towards the west and I think this is the most favorite part of the month for me where I see the beautiful crescents growing in size slowly. I hope you will join us today and we will discuss more pictures as they are shared with me tomorrow. So till then, enjoy the evening, enjoy the moon challenge.